This conference will now be recorded. President Young, I think we're ready to get started. All right, very good, Frank. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir, he will. Okay, great. Well, good evening. I want to say welcome to everyone who has joined this, um, this community meeting. I am JT Young, President and CEO for Memphis Light, Gas and Water. Uh, really grateful that you're here for this uh, discussion presentation. I'm sure many of you have been hearing in the media a little bit about what's uh, going on with regards to MLGW's evaluation of a power supply provider uh, for our um, electricity needs here in the uh, Shelby County area. As uh, some of you may know, we have been involved in a process called the Integrated Resource Plan, which is a, a process whereby we will evaluate um, I'm sorry, is there somebody that's not muted? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, the integrated resource plan, which uh, is a, um, a plan that an evaluation that allows us to determine optimal power supply for the, uh, for the region, for our area. This uh, began um, a little over a year ago formally. And uh, Siemens, who will be speaking tonight, has been uh, secured as our consultant. They've done a number of these really across the country and even outside of the country. So we, uh, we appreciate what they've done on last Friday. The presentation was made to of the integrated resource plan, the draft, which is what you'll see tonight, or the presentation of that, uh, was made to our power supply advisory team, which was the team assembled in uh, April of last year to provide input along the way as we considered this evaluation. The Power Supply Advisory Team is a 21-member team uh, from across the community representing various aspects of the community and their input uh, has been integrated into this plan. So tonight, uh, just to give you a little bit of a lay of the land, um, we will uh, have Siemens to go through uh, the results and uh, we have received already some questions and um, there will be time at the end for some additional questions i don't know if i know we will cover the questions that were submitted prior to the meeting and frank i'm not sure if we're going to be able to do the uh do, will i be able to post questions tonight or how does that go we're going to do live questions after the uh after siemens reads the questions and answers for the ones that were presented uh, on our website. So we will okay. really try to reserve time for the live questions. Okay, perfect, excellent. Um, so then, um, so with that, so then um, we'll, we'll do that. We'll go through, they'll go through the presentation. We'll deal with the questions um, at the end. And this begins a 30 day public comment period. So even after tonight, if you have additional questions or comments, you'll be able to uh, post those. This present, this, uh, the, the draft IRP is currently available on our website, mlgw.com. If you go to Power Supply Alternatives, right there on the front page, it is in three parts. You'll be able to go through that as the, and the presentation as well. Um, you'll be able to go through that and review that for yourself. And if you have any questions, you will be able to, of course, submit those questions from there. So. Um, I don't want to take too much time. I do want to thank everyone for joining us tonight. Um, I, I think it'll be informative and um, it's been a great opportunity to get together with people from the community to help us as we consider 
um, what's uh, what's ahead of us. I will say real briefly uh, before I turn it over to the uh, representatives from Siemens um, that going from here, following the 30 day comment period, Siemens will work to finalize this plan. And once the integrated resource plan is finalized, we will review that plan and make a recommendation to the uh, MLGW Board of Directors. We don't know exactly when that will be, but we anticipate that that may be sometime in August. And the integrated and the uh, MLGW Board um, will then uh, be asked to um, decide on the recommendation. More than likely, more than likely. Uh, following that recommendation, uh, there may there may be the opportunity then to do what's called an RFP or request for proposals to really validate the estimates that you will hear about tonight, um, and then make some decisions going forward from there. I do want people, to, uh, everyone, to understand that um, it, it is uh, the way this works is when it comes to a power supply decision. The MLGW board has to make a decision, whatever that decision will be, subsequent to their decision, whenever that is made, should that decision necessitate new contracts um, that extend longer than five years, the city council, of course, will have to approve um, the, recommend, the uh, decision by the board. And uh, the timing of that certainly is, is unknown. To reiterate, uh, we do currently take service our wholesale supply from uh, Tennessee Valley Authority had been for, of course, more than 80 years. Um, you will hear in the presentation tonight um, uh, some of the priorities that have been placed on our power supply uh, provider, what we think will be um, uh, important. And so um, you'll hear about you'll hear about that. And so as we move forward, um, there the options that we consider will need to meet those um, those uh, priorities that you will hear us talk about or see us talk about um, tonight. I do want to acknowledge you've heard Frank Fletcher. Frank Fletcher has been the project manager for MLGW on this project. Alonzo Weaver, um, who is our senior vice president, chief operating officer, I believe is also on. Uh, and Alonzo has been the executive sponsor for the integrated resource plan. Uh, and again, we'll remain on here and our plan is, is to be done around 7.30. That's kind of the plan we have on the agenda. And certainly we wanna make sure we uh, cover the material and answer any questions um, that you have. So with that, I'm going to now, I believe, turn this over to Gary Vecinas. Gary is with uh, Siemens. And Gary, if you can hear me, take it away. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Gary, we, we can hear you fine, Gary. Just real quick. For everyone who's on the call, could you please mute yourself? Uh, make sure that your mic is turned off. It should, it should be red. So please mute yourself if you're on the call. Yes, because there's a few people who are coming on. Well, Olivia had dismissed her and a few other people who came on. Web, right? It's not letting me mute them. So besides hearing all the background noise, I just dismissed them from the meeting. So we need to make sure we can get that under control. Right. Yeah. Constance, can you mute people if uh, if you hear noise? Well, yes. Typically, if they're on regularly, but there's some people awesome. who are coming on, and unfortunately, the mute button is grayed out, and it, they must be on the phone. Um, so I tried doing chat to let them know, um, too. I don't know if they're looking at the web as well, but I'll, I'll stay on top of it because that was too much background noise for sure. Thank you. Um, good, good evening. Uh, if you could flip to page four, I'm going to move through as quickly as I can. My name is Gary Vecinas. I'm the uh, project director for this study, and I'll be speaking along with Nelson Bacalau uh, and uh, Yan Du and Olivia Valentine uh, are also on from Siemens. Um, I've, uh, it's been an unusual uh, several months uh, uh, with the COVID-19 uh, situation and all of the meetings over the past several months have been done remotely and unfortunately, that goes to tonight as well. We're sorry that we cannot be there in person. 
This is the culmination of many months of work at our last public meeting. We were a little more than halfway through our process. So we've covered a lot of ground in the, in the past couple of months. Um, the document has been out for about a week. Uh, and so I'll, I'll presume that many of you, or maybe most of you have had a chance to at least review part of the study or part of the material. And so we're gonna do a quick flyover today of uh, the analysis that's been completed. And uh, we will be continuing to wrap up loose ends and incorporating your comments into the final report over the next few weeks. MLGW has an important decision to make. Uh, we'll be providing analysis tonight and describing several alternative portfolios. A portfolio is simply a, a group of contracts and generating assets uh, along with transmission that will meet the load under uh, a variety of objectives. And these objectives are on the, on the screen that shows that uh, we'll be looking at a variety of things tonight, including affordability. Of course, cost is going to be an important factor, but so is reliability. And we'll talk about that in a couple of different ways. Sustainability, which is really the carbon footprint, the emissions, the use of water, uh, and the percentage that's renewable. We'll be looking at stability of rates, which is important with regard to both uh, managing the risk of high cost outcomes or futures, and also the reliance on the market. And we'll also talk about economic impact. All of these factors are important to the decision that MLGW has to face. And we're not gonna focus on one, we're gonna talk about all of them. If you move to the next slide, uh, we'll show a little bit about what we are and aren't doing with regard to the IRP. Uh, our view is that, uh, and you'll see this if when you read the report, that we have not made a final recommendation whether or not MLGW should exit the TVA agreement or not. We feel that our role is to provide the trade-offs of those five different objectives and show what types of portfolios both if you stay with uh, TVA and also if you exit TVA and join MISO and, and get a mix of local supply and, uh, and MISO supply over time, uh, what the options mean, what the risks are, and what the costs are of those, of those different portfolios. Uh, we will be presenting some what we call no regret strategies. Uh, but we'll show a no regret strategy for staying with TVA and another no regret strategy associated with, uh, with joining MISO. Uh, what that simply means is, is as we looked at different portfolios, we found that there are certain characteristics of those portfolios that are constant regardless of the exposure to the market or the future conditions that they face. We call them no regret strategies. In a moment, um, I'll summarize some high-level findings, and then Nelson Bacalao is going to cover some of the key details that we hope will answer some of your questions. Uh, at the end of that, we have 20 or so questions that were sent to us as of last night that we will cover before we open the phone lines and allow you to ask more questions. And as, as uh, JT mentioned, you'll also have a few weeks to provide comments before we finalize the report. Um, Next slide, please. So shortly, Nelson will describe how we arrived at the following 11 portfolios that you see on your screen here. Um, but there are four strategies that were considered. Uh, TVA, staying with TVA as the supplier of choice is one of those strategies. And for that, we looked at two different options. One is the current contract, which has a five-year exit provision, which means that if you wanted to exit the agreement with TVA, you would give notice and then could exit the agreement five years later. That's what we call the existing or status quo uh, strategy, of strategy one. The second is a long-term partnership offer that TVA has provided to all of its customers. And that would extend the 
uh, provision for exiting from five years to 20 years. You would have to give notice 20 years in advance of leaving the TVA agreement. And for that, they've offered a discount of 3% of, of some of their costs, which would be an incentive to reduce costs, uh, but extend the length of the agreement. And so we will be evaluating uh, both of those options tonight. This slide basically looks at the other two strategies, one of which is an all MISO strategy, which means that you would, in that circumstance, MLGW would not purchase any local supplies, but receive all of its uh, energy and capacity from the MISO market. Uh, and then we looked at several combination strategies, which would include a combination of local resources and also MISO supplies. And, and 10 of the portfolios shown on this screen are, 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 are combinations of local resources and MISO supply. One of those is at the bottom is the portfolio that is solely from MISO. Uh, on this slide, you'll see capacity um, amounts of different types of resources, thermal meaning natural gas of some type, which could be combined cycle or combustion turbines. Uh, and you see the number of megawatts in the columns on the left-hand side, and you see the number of resources on the right-hand side in terms of, um, for instance, it's at the first one is two combined cycles of 450 megawatts and one uh, uh, combustion turbine. So this gives you an idea of the various portfolios. Uh, of those portfolios in our evaluation and our screening process, four of those portfolios stood out. Those are our portfolios five and six and nine and 10. And, uh, and we'll show you how we screen those down to those four, but in the results I'm gonna show you in just a moment, you'll see uh, the evaluation of the TVA portfolios against those four portfolios, which are all under strategy three, which is a combination of self-supply or local supply and MISO supplies. So let's turn to some of the results. Um, you'll see on this next slide um, that if starting on the left, we have evaluated the net present value, which means looking at the total costs over the planning horizon through 2039, and looking at those costs and taking the net present value by discounting future years back to a current year so that we can actually compare them uh, on an apples to apples basis um, using one number. And in effect, the, you see the two TVA uh, um, portfolios on the left and then you see on the right, the four portfolios that I just mentioned that were a combination of local and MISO resources. And the savings are shown in green. So we are actually showing that in uh, those four portfolios that include MISO and local supplies, there are savings of approximately $1.9 billion relative to TVA's current contract in 2018 dollars or 1.5 billion relative to TVA's long-term partnership proposal uh, that many of the TVA companies have, have taken. So in nominal dollars, these are all in real 2018 dollars, in nominal dollars that, uh, that um, $2 billion in savings relative to the existing agreement can reach approximately $3 billion over time, assuming about a 2% inflation. The next two slides actually convert that to annual average numbers. And so it amounts to uh, the annual savings associated with the two portfolios that were that had the highest savings, uh, which are five and nine, amount to about $150 million in, in uh, 2018 dollars in comparison with the existing agreement and about 120 million when compared to the long-term plan. And nominal numbers that, uh, that 150 million achieves about 200 million per year relative to the existing TVA agreement. Next slide. 
So recall that there are several factors, not just costs that we considered in this analysis. And I, I, you'll see some more slides from Nelson in a few minutes, but regarding risk, we, we actually show it later, but uh, the 95th percentile of costs, which means what we're characterizing as the worst, the worst outcome under the uh, TVA agreement, the portfolios five and nine still have savings relative to the TVA contract in that 95th percentile outcome. That indicates that even though TVA actually has slightly lower risk, meaning lower fluctuations of the net present value, when we exposed it to 200 different possible future outcomes, uh, still, even though it had lower individual risk, uh, it actually still was higher cost than the 95th percentile outcome for portfolios five and nine. In addition, uh, we looked at CO2 emissions and we looked at the energy from zero carbon resources. The one in the middle here actually shows that with regard to CO2 emissions, the forecast uh, of the portfolios five and nine actually show about 50% of the carbon emissions that the TVA forecast shows. Um, note that when we looked at the TVA forecast, we didn't build a portfolio for them. We actually took the portfolio that was part of their integrated resource plan and then used the same cost factors that we applied and market factors that we applied to the portfolios for MISO so that we compared them on an apples to apples basis. But this is relative to their projected uh, future uh, IRP portfolio. On the right hand side, you'll see that um, from a reliability standpoint, we had a couple of measures for that as well, but the TVA portfolios actually showed a bit higher reliability than the two portfolios that we constructed with portfolios five and nine. However, um, and I know there are a bunch of questions that were related to this, uh, we constructed these portfolios under, under uh, not only meeting but actually exceeding the NERC and the MISO uh, reliability requirements such that uh, all of these portfolios, actually you could take out two different transmission lines at one time during peak period and still meet load with the portfolios that we've set up using MISO. So the question really becomes, although TVA actually is slightly higher in reliability, the question is how much do you need to spend for additional reliability in, in circumstances where you have uh, a number of very highly reliable portfolios. So with that, I'm going to, uh, to stop and actually turn it over to Nelson. What we're going to do also is to show um, why some of the numbers or some of the savings that we have shown uh, are somewhat lower than numbers that have been quoted in the press and by others, and what factors have weighed into those calculations. Uh, in part, they are due to actually a little bit lower forecast of what TVA's costs will be in the future, uh, but it also includes what many things that TVA provides as benefits, uh, including payment in limited in lieu of taxes and other benefits along with the investment that's required to achieve the reliability that we've talked about and some additional costs that will be incurred to uh, be a local balancing authority and some of the, the activities that TVA has been providing for MLGW. That, that causes the majority of these differences, but we'll show them in the next few slides. Uh, for the moment, let me turn it over to Nelson and cover some of the details of, the, of that study. Hey, Gary, this is Frank. Uh, before we transition to uh, Nelson, can you yeah. just spend maybe uh, about 20, 20 seconds or 30 seconds just explaining MISO and who they are? I know we've presented in the slide, but just a little bit of background on MISO. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, MISO is not a utility like TVA. 
they are a system operator. They're a non-for-profit uh, system operator that basically runs a marketplace that its members participate in. All of its members, and if if uh, if MLGW were to join the MISO, what that means is that they can freely trade resources uh, in the marketplace, um, but they are responsible for developing uh, their own supplies and procuring them in the open market. And, and that's when, when JT mentioned an RFP, basically what you do in an RFP is you go out to other producers of power and you invite them to bid in renewable resources. Uh, they could be long-term uh, power agreements. They could be uh, building a power plant on your behalf. Uh, but basically, um, it's a freely open traded market and MISO ensures the reliability of the system and all of the members by setting requirements uh, that will ensure the reliability of the system at all times. And that is, we actually work with MISO to, to make sure that the analysis that we performed on how much uh, transmission would need to be built to connect to uh, the MISO. Uh, it met all of the requirements of MISO to ensure that the reliability of the entire system and all of its members are met over time. All right. Thank you very much, Karen. Um, what I'm going to be doing in the next half an hour or so is to, to provide you with the details of the analysis that was conducted. Um, as Gary mentioned, uh, the, the process was to leave no stern, no no uh, turn, no no stone unturned. It's a, in finding what's the best portfolio or the least cost portfolio that uh, MLG Low should could consider in for securing their future energy needs. And to do that, uh, we selected a number of, or, or we focused on a number of strategies that uh, Gary mentioned and a number of scenarios. The strategies, as uh, Gary indicated, they include the staying with TVA, uh, procuring the resources from uh, self-supply, which means local resources, plus resources located in the MISO market or buying everything from the MISO market. We also consider another strategy, which is to build everything local, but very early on, it we found to be impractical. We would have too many resources concentrated in just one place. So on one hand, then we had the strategies. On the other was, how do we test these strategies? And for that, we identified a number of futures, futures or, or scenarios. These are uh, future states of the world. Like for example, in one case we could have high load, in other case with, because of the economy, in other case we could have low load, or we could have high load and low gas. All of these scenarios were created so that they would produce a different approach, a different way to develop the system in response to those scenarios. And then we test them. We test them one scenario, one uh, portfolio that was created, for example, for a high transmission. Then we tested how would it behave under uh, low load? How would it behave under high gas prices? In uh, the right-hand side of this slide, you see a, across the top the strategies that we consider and going down the scenarios. And for each of those combinations, we created a portfolio, which is indicated by those four letters. You see that for strategy one, which is staying with TVA, we only had one portfolio, which is 
basically their um, long-term plan. They, they develop an IRP and we consider that IRP in, in this strategy. And uh, for MISO, because that was developed last, we had the benefit of having done all of this analysis under strategy three, so we focused the the, um, the old MISO with the benefit of those of that experience. Can we move to the next slide? Jen? All right, this is, uh, I, of course, I don't expect you to see these, uh, all of these numbers. This just to give you an indication of the overall process that was conducted. Uh, we created a number of portfolios, about 20 portfolios, and, and they were developed doing a two-step process. One is letting the computer to tell us, hey, this is the least cost plan. And then we looked at it, we looked at some of the weakness of each portfolios, and then we modified it slightly. For example, in some cases, we saw that uh, combustion turbine was entering later in the plan, and we know, hey, if we advance this combustion turbine, we'll get better reliability. So we did that. Or we, we had more uh, renewable generation entering later in the plan, and we said, hey, if we advance this, we may achieve lower costs. And indeed, when we do that, we, we found that effectively we got a better portfolio. So it, it was a two-step process. And, uh, and from that, we got the first 20 adjust portfolios. And then looking at each one of those, there were portfolios that were clearly better than others. Like, for example, the, the one that we call here S3, S1P, was much better than S3, S1, so that became portfolio one. So the 20 so portfolios were reduced to the 11 portfolios that uh, we will discuss in throughout this presentation. Uh, can we move to the next slide? Now, when you create these portfolios, you need to measure them. You need to rank them. You need to understand what do they mean. And, uh, and for that, we have a number of objectives and metrics. One of them, very important, is reliability. And reliability in, in, the, in this context has two components. One component is to have enough generation, enough factory to produce your products. And the second is to have enough transmission, ability to move your products to the load, to the consumers, your trucks. So the, the reliability we measure in, in those two ways. And uh, one metric that we use considers on one hand, the generation available, plus the capacity in port limit, how much capacity we can get from, from the MISO market. And that we divide by the peak load. That gives us an indication of how reliable is our system. But also we conducted some other assessments, uh, as Gary mentioned, how the system behaves when you have one line out, how it behaves when you have two lines out, that, that type of, of um, situations, just to make sure that the system is highly reliable. The other metric that we considered is the affordability or least cost. This is straightforward, just what is the, the portfolio that provides the least cost considering all of the necessary um, costs that you need to cover. And, and this we call the revenue requirement, how much money you need to collect so you're able to pay your fuel, you have, you're able to pay your gener the generators that are selling you power, you're able to cover your MISO membership and so on. So that's the other criteria that was used. Then there is some risk associated with, uh, with generating power. You have fuel, you have gas, so some portfolios that are more dependent on gas, 
behave worse than others that are more depending on, say, renewables, something that doesn't change as much with uh, the unknown variables like the fuel. So that's another criteria that we looked at when assessing our, our portfolios. The next one, very quickly, is sustainability. Uh, Gary mentioned them. We look at carbon production. We looked at um, the percentage of the energy that comes from renewable resources or zero carbon resources, and, and, and so on. For example, we look at water consumption, and I'll enter into that a little bit later. Another criteria, very important because not all portfolios behave the same, is what we call the market risk. In some portfolios, you need to purchase more power from the market. Whose market? Uh, MISO, the MISO market. You're buying there on the spot and you're selling there on the spot. So the higher the amount that you have to buy and sell on the spot, the higher this risk. And finally, the last two are economic growth. Not all portfolios develop the same amount of resources in Shelby County. So we, we measure this. Those portfolios that have more resources in Shelby County are better according to this metric. And lastly, resiliency. We measure as how the portfolios behave under extreme events. Let's suppose that there is a major storm and uh, two of the main incoming lines, which are separate, they, they come from completely different directions. But what if both of those are out? What will be the consequences for MLGW, and we look at that. And, how, and if necessary, uh, what amount of load need to be shed, need to be curtailed in order to prevent um, a major overload. With that, let's go to the next slide. Uh, as all studies, we need to produce a number of assumptions. Uh, one of them is the load load forecast, and, and as Gary mentioned, uh, we don't conduct just a central analysis, but we evaluate how the portfolios behave with changes on the assumptions. And what you see there, the blue area, is the area where the load forecast can move in those um, multiple runs that we do of, to, to the model. In one run, it, we may have... Uh, a load that is, uh, let's say, 300, 350 megawatts in another maybe, three, sorry, 3,500 in another maybe 3,000 and so on. So every, every draw, we pick a value of the load. Let's go to the next slide. Same thing for the gas in every draw we pick a value of the gas and see how the portfolios behave. And the black line in the middle is a reference. So we always look as well how the portfolios behave under the reference. Let's move to the next slide. Uh, for the various technologies, we have, as you may remember in the previous slide, we had combined cycles that's a combination of a uh, gas turbine with uh, a steam turbine that maximizes the benefit, the, the, um, the efficiency of the generation. We also have gas turbines that provide basically reserves. We have solar, and as you can see, we, we are reflecting the, the expected drop in the cost of solar. We have wind. And we also have battery, battery energy storage. Can we go to the next slide? With respect of um, environmental considerations, we do put a price to carbon starting in 2025. And uh, because there is quite a bit of uncertainty about it, there is a very wide distribution. Being the top part, the cost to, to the society of carbon. And we'll move to the next slide. Here is another view of what I was referring earlier about the market risk. 
this is the energy price, our forecast for the energy price in MISO market. The black line is our reference forecast, and then the blue, the light blue and the dark blue indicates the area where those forecasts can vary. And we also put in here two other forecasts, ones for I, I, ICF, that is very similar to us with a little, in the short term, there is a little bit of a difference, but largely in the, in the long term, we align. And MISO. MISO, we have three values. They start lower than us, slightly lower than us, but then they go up. So that, that's a, a reflection of what uh, the portfolios will be confronted with when evaluating the interchange of energy with MISO. Can we go to the next slide? All right. Now, you remember that I mentioned that reliability is measured in two aspects. One, having the factory, having enough generation to supply your load, and the other having the, the trucks, the transmission. This relates to the, to the factories, to the generation. Uh, in the US in general, and MICE in particular, this is measured as having the risk of not supplying your load because not enough generation only once every 10 years. Just to give you as a reference, in other places could be twice a year. So the US is highly reliable. And, and MISO exceeds this criteria. Every year, we, MISO does an assessment, evaluate what is the, the required generation to be installed to achieve this one in 10, and all areas within MISO have more than, than necessary. And uh, that translates into a reserve of 18.2%, considering the installed capacity, or that some people call the unforced capacity, which is just reducing all of your generators by availability of 8.9%. So whenever we design our portfolios, all of them meet this 8.9%. Additionally, you, need, you consider the amount of generation that you can bring from the rest of MISO. And this is what is called your local reliability requirement. How much resources you need to have locally so you can guarantee that only once every 10 years at maximum, you will not be able to supply your load considering your local resources plus what, what you can bring from MISO. And that number is higher. That number in the case of MLGW would be 126%. So I'm taking your generation plus what you can bring from ISO, that has to be 126% of, of your load. However, if you interconnect heavily, which is what we're planning to do with, uh, with our neighbors in Arkansas, then that, re that requirement drops to 120%. We designed all of the portfolios to meet the 126%, but when we are fully interconnected, that requirement in reality is 120%. So in the future, whenever you see that that 126% uh, metrics, you know that it's coming from. It's how much local resources plus transmission you have to have available to supply your load. Let's go to the next slide. Now, uh, this is a very busy slide as well. Uh, I'll just um, mention some of the key elements. We did the analysis considering that uh, EVA will not allow us to wheel power, to use their system to deliver power to MLDW, which means that we need to separate completely our system from, from theirs and fully interconnect into MISO. And for that, we designed a system that has three interconnection points, three big interconnection points, one to the north, uh, one to the west, 
both go go into into Arkansas, and then one to um, to, to uh, Mississippi, which is the Twinkle Town to my center connection. So we have three large interconnections, and the system is designed that in most of the cases, and I just mentioned later, I'll mention the only exception, can operate with only one of them in service. So that meets and surpasses all of the MISO and NERC reliability requirements. That's in, for the case that we're, that we're getting all of the resources from MISO, then we have to go a little bit further and we created a fourth interconnection. And that's another 500 kV line going into, into Arkansas. Go to the next slide. Uh, this just to give you an idea of cost. We're not talking a small, a small amounts. For the base interconnections, we're talking about $700 million in transmission investments. Or that's about $2 per megawatt hour to, to the average rate. <clears throat> and uh, if we were to interconnect. I will get to that. Uh, I have all of uh, listening. If we're going to have all of the resources in my so then that cost will become even higher and go in the order of about one billion dollars, a little bit over one billion dollars. So the takeaway from this is that the investments are not small; they are factored into our portfolio. So whenever you see the comparison, it considers this cost, and the system was made very reliable. Can we go to the next slide? Then uh, we also want to make sure that we accounted for all other costs. So we would not leave anything to chance. And we're, we're counting for the payments that uh, MLGW will have to do in lieu of taxes. Uh, and those can be significant. Amount almost as much as transmission, $2.3 per megawatt hour. Uh, we're also including the cost that MLGW would have to incur to replace all of the benefits that TVA is bringing to the communities. So we assess those benefits and calculated what would be the cost for MLGW to reproduce them. And it's in the order of 13 to to $50 million a year. Uh, there's a cost to be a member of MISO. MISO is a not-for-profit organization. It's funded by its member. Uh, and in this case, it takes about close to $7 million per year to become a MISO member and cover all of the MISO, well, our share of MISO's operations. Uh, other costs are the energy efficiency. Um, an IRP wouldn't be a good IRP if we didn't account for the benefits that accrue from investing in not having to generate, but consuming the energy more efficient. And this is what are these programs all about. Investing in reducing your demand without reducing the comfort. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, and this, this is the last of the components. Uh, can you please mute your phone? This is the, the last of the components, which is the cost that MLDW will have to incur to become uh, the. Hey, Nelson. Hey, Nels, I apologize real quick. If you're on the uh, call, could you please mute your phone? We can hear a lot of background interference. Thank you. I have checked, I, and I have been checking and scrolling up and down, and everyone is muted, so I'm not sure where that background noise is coming from, but from the, yes, we definitely... It was a phone. It was a phone, because I, I saw it on the screen. Uh, somebody... Uh, from, okay. Okay. Hopefully, okay, so it's going to go away. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's gone. 
Okay, thank you. As I was mentioning, as uh, MLDW becomes, uh, take, takes on the, the role of TBA as the order or operator of generator generation, they will be what is called a local balancing authority. Balancing because you'll be balancing the generation with the load. So you'll be operating that generation. You'll be beating that generation into MISO market. So all of that has cost. Additionally, as the IRP ramps up to bring people for planning, you need to be bring additional people for entering into these long-term contracts. So there, there is a, a bit of important investments that have to be accounted for in the next um, seven to eight years. And, that, and that's what's shown in the lower part of this um, slide, which are all of the other costs that MLDW will have to incur to become a separate entity owning generation and a, and a full MISO member. Again, the objective was to include all possible costs so we could do a, a fair comparison with TBA. With that, uh, let's move to the next slide. Just very quickly, this slide shows an overview of all of the portfolios the, I, I, I don't expect you to detail it. Just look at the colors and you'll see that according to all of the metrics, we see that the portfolios that we were, that were selected, the five, nine, 10, and six, behave better than all of the portfolios that were considered inferior by comparison. And we compare all of them with the TVA, the base, and the long-term par partnership. So with that, let's move to the next slide that will give you another view of how this portfolios rank up. And uh, this is the present value of the revenue requirements. In other words, all of the money that MLW would have to pay to supply the load according to the different portfolios brought to present value, brought to today. So we can compare them on an apples to apples basis. And we see that the portfolios that were selected, all of them were in the least cost. In fact, we brought portfolio six into the mix because it's the only one that had two combined cycles. All of the others have just one combined cycle. And we see the case with three combined cycles were clearly not part of the solution. Let's go to the next slide. This just to give you an overview of the portfolios. All of them have large amount of renewables, which is the JLO part. Like for example, in portfolio five, we're talking about over 4,000 megawatts of renewables associated with that in this portfolio, plus one combined cycle and a number of combustion turbines largely there for reliability. And the difference between portfolio five and 10 is that we advanced these combined cycle, these um, combustion turbines. You see that they, they were there at the back end and now they're at the beginning because of the reliability benefit. And we'll see a little bit later why is that. Let's move to the next slide. Portfolio six. Again, has two combined cycles, a little bit more thermal generation, and therefore it needs less renewables. So in this case, we have uh, a little over 3,000 megawatts of renewable and just one combustion turbine. And it needs less in transmission than, for example, portfolio five. And then has one large combined cycle, only one, but it's very large, which means that needs a lot more investing in transmission to interconnect heavily into MISO. Because when you, when now you're relying on just one large combined cycle, when it's out, you depend a lot more on your neighbors. So you need more transmission. And it doesn't have a city. So the only thing that 
MLDW will have in its territory will be the renewable and just one big combined cycle. But it has very good cost. So let's go to the next slide. Six minutes, no. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, here we're looking again at the slides that uh, Gary mentioned. This, uh, the savings, same thing. Now we see that portfolios five have about $1.5 billion in savings as compared with TDA the, um, on the long-term capacity, sorry, on the long-term partnership, or about $2 billion if you compare to the original contract. Let's go to the next slide. Just show the ones that you haven't, we haven't shown, Nelson. Yeah, yeah, okay. Again, the, this one is relevant. And this one shows the worst outcome. If things, everything went, went against the portfolio, what would be the worst that it would be? Or close to the worst? Only 5% of the cases would be even worse than this. I would see that TVA goes up by about 5%. That shows the stability of their supply just because of the nuclear and the hydro. Uh, basically that. And in our portfolios, we go up, like portfolio five and nine, they go up by 15%. And the ones that depend more on, on generation that portfolio 10 go up by 17%. But still, portfolios five and nine are cheaper than TDA, even, even in this worst outcome. Let's go to the next slide. The CO2 we already talked about, uh, the portfolios reduce significant the amount of CO2. Uh, we also talked about that all of the new portfolios have significant levels of, can, let me just go back, Jan, please, to the previous slide. I want to show something. If you just consider renewables, then there is a very large difference. Where, talking about 52% of renewables, including solar and wind. And if you don't count nuclear and don't count large hydro, then the difference is substantial with TVA. Now we can go to the next slide. This talks about water consumption in Shelby County. And uh, we do recognize that the portfolios that bring local generation, they'll consume some additional water. and. Uh, we did all of our assessment considering that's going to be municipal water. And uh, and there is an option even, if you don't have water at all, then you can still build your combined cycles, but it'll be a little bit more extensive because you'll need to use air cool condensers. Let's move to the next slide. This shows the reliability. This is what I meant. All portfolios meet and surpass the standard of meaning the, the 126 percent but remember we're very well interconnected into MISO and if we're if we're part of MISO completely then that number will be even higher I, I was just as preparation to this I was calculating what would be the value considering that we're full part of MISO and that value would be 146 percent but what the what aspect we do have to take into consideration? Well, what if we lose two or three interconnections? Well, on portfolio five, we would need to shed about one third of the load during that emergency. So that, that's why portfolio five is not in our final list. While nine, which is a derivation of portfolio nine, five, you don't have that risk as you can see there. Okay, the other aspects that uh, we consider is the market risk, which is the exchanges of energy sold and purchased into MISO. And uh, we see, of course, that the portfolios that have high amount of renewable, you need to sell during the day. Your, when you have excess solar in your system, you sell into MISO and you buy at night when you don't have solar. So that's an additional one, one consideration. 
that uh, needs to be taken into account when considering portfolios heavy on renewable like five and nine. There are ways of dealing with it, but that's one aspect that needs to be considered. Let's go to the next slide. The, the, this one's largely the same. Both portfolios have the, about the same amount of investment in the shared account. So in this case, you would say it's a technical tie. Nelson, I'm going to jump in and, and say that uh, we, we're not going to go over those slides. I think we need to provide the last 30 minutes to answer the questions that we've had. Um, so I'm going to kind of take over and, and just uh, jump into the questions that we have had. Um, don't, don't you think it's important, at least on the two no regret recommendations, Jack? Um, I would say that that's important. One minute. Okay. Thank you. From the analysis, we derive a number of what we call no regret recommendations. If you decide to join MISO, you need to maximize your local generation, you need to install at least one combined cycle, and you need to install one and most likely two combustion turbines, and you need to be part of, of MISO zone eight, resource zone eight, because the benefit that you'll get from that are substantial. Let's go to the next slide. The other aspect is that an RFP needs to be conducted to verify all of the findings that we did throughout our study, all of the cost, and uh, fine tune. So you go into your implementation with clear understanding of the costs, not planning, but full understanding via contracts. Go to the next slide. In case that you decide to stay with TVA, then there are some elements that are very important. One of them is that you should maximize your local renewable. TVA under the long-term partnership is allowing only 5% of your load to be supplied by renewables. That number should we should try to increase that number as much as we can. And also we need to evaluate whether on one hand we go with the long-term partnership and get the cheaper or the discount of 3.1%. But in that case, we do away with our option in the future if, the, if things change to go out of the contract versus the long-term partnership that we are basically married for the next 20 years. So with that, then uh, take it away, Gary. Okay, we have almost 20 questions, so I'm gonna try and speak as fast as I can and summarize the questions. Uh, the first is from Mr. T. McNeil. He said, if Memphis leaves TVA, but cities like Lakeland or Collierville uh, decide to stay with TVA, does that change the uh, cost and the savings relating to uh, the Memphis ratepayers. Uh, the answer is we are looking into that. In the final report, we will address uh, the loss of one or more MLGW members um, who could stay with TVA. Uh, there could be an impact, but if we see reduced load, there are some things that MLGW can do to adjust its plan and have some offsetting cost reductions like lowering their capacity and energy purchases from the market and their the amount of renewables. So uh, we might see some impact, but it can be mitigated. The second question was from Phil Dotson. He said, does MISO or Entergy plan on ensuring uh, that local minority companies participate? And what kind of local minority participation goals can we anticipate if we decide to switch to MISO or one of their companies? Uh, MISO does not make those decisions, uh, MLGW uh, will. Uh, MISO, as I mentioned, is not a utility that supplies power to TVA. Um, and so all project decisions and, uh, will be made by MLGW and they can determine and implement any local minority participation goals. Uh, the third question from uh, Martin Truitt, 
uh, relates to whether or not other power companies have left and what happened to their rates uh, if they left TVA. Um, I asked MLGW this question and they've indicated that there have been about three instances of utilities uh, or distributors that have left TVA. Uh, Paducah, Kentucky was one that left and they invested heavily in a coal plant and some peaking facilities. And for a variety of reasons, those investments didn't work out and provide the anticipated savings and actually customers experienced an increase in rates rather than decrease. Uh, Bristol, Virginia, I'm told did achieve some, uh, some savings initially, but ultimately they chose to return to TVA. Uh, Warren, Kentucky, also left TVA and is currently being served by East Kentucky Power uh, Cooperative. Uh, and they have attempted to obtain uh, rights to wheel power from TVA, but they've given up uh, and abandoned their attempts to obtain those rights. So there's been sort of a mixed bag historically. I think uh, relating that to this study, um, it shows the importance of how well you plan and manage risks. It's one of the reasons that we uh, are proposing and recommend that an RFP be done to verify that the savings are there and potentially to determine whether or not those savings can be locked in uh, under the terms of various PPAs. So um, I will also mention that uh, one of the things that Nelson showed a couple minutes ago was that we did an analysis that looked at a very, very wide range of future market conditions. And even in the worst case outcomes, there were savings associated with, uh, with exiting TVA. So it's not that we are just placing a bet on the most likely outcome. We actually looked at a wide range of solutions as part of the planning process. So between that and the RFP, I think uh, a lot of the risks associated with leaving are potentially being dealt with. Uh, the next question is from Laura Harris, who asked, from an environmental standpoint, MISO has been given indications of potential carbon footprint in the future, and the majority of their coal comes from coal. Won't that be a setback from where we are? Um, MISO's members are the ones that make the decision on their environmental footprint. Uh, its members, uh, was shown in the meeting uh, last week, its members are moving away from coal in a pretty dramatic fashion. 75% um, of their uh, uh, portfolio in 2005 was coal. That in 2019 was down to 39% with 9% renewable. And by 2030, there are announced plans to put them at 27% coal and 32% renewable. So the energy purchases from MISO will be having declining levels of coal over time in its footprint. Moreover, uh, that's one of the things that we looked at very heavily in terms of exposure to the market risk. And in most portfolios that we're looking at, less than 20% of that portfolio would be through energy or capacity market purchases that would have carbon in its footprint. Uh, MLGW can really make their own determination on its mix of renewables and fossil resources beyond what they purchase in the market, and they can determine how much of that is purchased in the open market. Uh, what we've shown uh, on the slides is that um, even a more renewable mix with PPAs uh, is provided at lower cost to TVA's portfolio, which also includes some coal in it right now. Uh, the next question is from uh, Jonathan Epstein. Uh, basically, he indicates that uh, Entergy is a, a for-profit company, and it's reasonable to assume that they would look for ways to ensure profitability in any relationship that they pursue. That they pursue. So he asked, three, he asked three questions. Does that mean that our rates will increase relative to the rates uh, that are currently uh, per MLGW? Will Entergy consider partnering that would put guaranteed rates in writing and in the contract? 
and as energy is headquartered out of state, aren't we spending our money outside of Memphis and outside of Tennessee? Uh, it is true that Entergy is a for-profit company, as are the independent power producers and companies who would be responding to bids uh, to build either to either build or sell existing generation uh, to uh, to MLGW from from MISO, and they do expect return on their investment. But those are all those returns are all built into the pricing of the assets that have been considered in this study. Uh, so the savings that we're projecting already includes a return on investment for these suppliers. Uh, now, obviously, um, that the, the RFP process can verify what the prices will be, but our expectation in terms of the analysis that have been performed is that they can earn a return and still provide prices that are consistent with, with the study's uh, impacts. Can you lock in prices? That depends upon the bids that come in. Uh, some particularly renewable producers will provide long-term PPAs at, at totally locked in prices. Uh, others will have some escalation built into their, their bids. So you have to look at the bids that are received and the terms and the conditions and determine whether or not you can lock those into price into into place. Um, so the uh, and how much is within and outside of the state is actually up to MLGW. We're showing a lot of local renewables uh, and the ability to build some of the fossil plants within the local area, which is reflected in the investment uh, uh, numbers that we were showing. Um, there was another question with regard to Paducah that I've already addressed, but uh, Michael Gariga also asked uh, what will happen to the economic incentives that TVA is currently paying on existing uh, economic and industrial development projects. Uh, those would go away in uh, if X, if uh, MLGW chooses to exit the agreement. Uh, but we have put in an equivalent amount of dollars to perform the same functions that MLGW would have to incorporate. But ultimately, it's their decision as to how they spend those dollars. Uh, but we have included that to make sure that it's a fair comparison uh, to the TVA proposal because there are economic incentives and industrial and development that's been built into their uh, analysis that we have priced out. Uh, Martin Zavala uh, asks, um, I'm a new homeowner and not, sh but uh, uh, from all the companies you've looked at, which one is most reliable and which one won't make the rates increase on my bills? Um, the analysis that we've shown thus far is that uh, all of the options are highly reliable TVA has slightly higher metrics on reliability, but also has a significantly higher cost. So uh, that's part of the trade-off that uh, MLGW has to consider in terms of uh, the evaluation. Now, I will say that Siemens did not want to overbuild transmission connections because it does raise costs. And so we put in what we thought were very re reliable portfolios that meet or exceed all standards that are out there, uh, including the losses, Nelson pointed out, of two, uh, of two lines at the same time during a peak period. So we think that all of the portfolios are reliable, uh, but if, if they chose to, MLGW could spend more and increase the reliability metrics if they wish to. Uh, the next question is from Alexis Morris. And her question is, uh, since we just experienced a rate increase from MLGW to fix our systems, are they going to have to increase our rates again to build new power plants? Uh, the answer is, is that um, if MLGW chooses to exit TVA, our current, even though they would have to build new transmission infrastructure and get contracts from power from its RFP, but 
our analysis shows that this can be done at a lower rate than it currently pays TVA. But uh, that still has to be confirmed through an RFP before that can be assured. The next question is from Mike Walzik. His question is that um, TVA appears to be the most reliable option for supplying electricity. When supply is not reliable, businesses and homeowners suffer uh, and they can leave and go elsewhere. My question is why would you leave a known reliable supplier for an unknown less reliable less reliable, cheaper, cheaper supplier. This is a decision that MLGW must face, which is how good is good enough in terms of reliability. Um, everybody has heard of the term gold plating. The question is, is that at some point, does additional reliability worth the cost associated with what you're paying for it? Um, TVAs is slightly higher in the metrics, uh, but, but you could pay more in the portfolios that we put together and increase them. Uh, in Siemens' view, uh, all of the portfolios that we put forward were highly reliable. So we don't think that there's a major trade-off there, uh, but it is something that MLGW has to consider. The next question, is from Sonia Pena. I've seen a lot of articles about savings of $450 million for the city, but now you say it's about 120 million. Can you tell me why there's such a major difference? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, we've mentioned some of those in the analysis already, but I'll go over a few of them again. Uh, for one, uh, Siemens and MISO did a deep analysis of what investments required to meet or exceed the MISO standards. And I expect that our costs associated with that investment to achieve the levels of reliability are higher than some of the others that were quoted. Second, our savings were expressed in 2018 dollars. It wasn't clear to us whether some of the reported savings included inflation. Uh, if you convert those numbers to inflation, that increases the savings significantly. Third, we needed to make sure that all of the benefits that TVA provided, such as economic development, incentive programs, and payment in lieu of taxes were included. And it's not clear that the other studies captured all of those to the level that we did. Fourth, we actually show that TVA's costs will decline slightly in real terms over time where most of the other uh, uh, analyses that we saw actually escalated TVA's cost quite rapidly over time. So when you put all of those factors together, that explains why our forecasts are somewhat smaller than the previously quoted ones. Um, however, there may be other opportunities to increase the savings that could come out of the uh, RFP process, for example, if more inexpensive local renewables are available than we showed, or if ultimately TVA agrees to negotiate wheeling or other things uh, through their system on the transmission side. The next question is from Tevis Shaw, um, stating that uh, if we need to know, uh, let's see here. Can you assure me that MISO or Entergy will have better reliability than we currently have with TVA? Uh, I think it's less a question of, of uh, reliability in terms of uh, generation because the, uh, the generation that you can get uh, from the bids will determine what the price is and the reliability are. It's really more a question of the transmission reliability than it is the reliability from individual suppliers. Uh, there are questions, there are some bidders that may come in and not be able to deliver their uh, and that is a risk that has to be factored in and considered, although I believe we've captured a lot of the uncertainty in the capital costs 
as well as the operating cost of all the plants in the risk analysis that we did. But it's always an important question to ask. Uh, the next question is from Eddie Settles, who asks a series of questions about uh, how volatile the wholesale market has been in MISO over the past 10 to 20 years and how MLGW would hedge against those price uh, swings over time. Uh, what, and again, that's a great question. Our answer is, is that um, history is not necessarily a good predictor of future market volatility. Uh, because there have been a lot of shifts over the past 10 to 20 years in moving from a fossil-based to a renewable-based generation. Um, in addition, the, uh, the, the last several years, gas prices have been relatively flat and not volatile, and the same thing has been true of MISO prices. Um, if you go back 10 to 20 years, it was a different story, and that was before uh, shale gas kind of came in and you saw a lot more volatility. Uh, so when we look in, in the future, we recognize uh, that the volatility can change. It's going to be a function of the supply and demand balances within MISO, and we recognize that there is the potential for more volatility in the future uh, than we have been seeing in the past several years. And we built those, if you looked at the curves that we were looking at in the shading, we looked at significant volatility in these markets going forward when evaluating the alternatives that we had. Um, as far as hedging goes, you can hedge not only physically by getting a mix of different uh, supplies, but you can also do financial hedges, lock in gas prices uh, for your gas supply. So uh, at some cost, you can lock in and, and uh, some of the volatility and, and reduce or mitigate the risk associated with that volatility. The next question is from Brian Jacob. And he asked the question, uh, he, he noted in our report that we suggested that if MLGW were to exit the TVA agreement, that there could be win-win situations uh, with TVA. And he said, if you were negotiating on behalf of Memphis, what would you want to get out of negotiations and what would be the fiscal implications of that? Uh, Siemens hasn't really evaluated the potential for what those win-win negotiations might be. Uh, just as we pointed out, there were some questions about what would happen if um, MLGW were to lose some customers. The same question could be raised of TVA. What happens if uh, MLGW leaves and exits the agreement? Well, that's three gigawatts of, of power that is not required for TVA system. So they would have options. They could either find other uh, supply, uh, other companies to increase their load, or they could reduce their costs by shutting down facilities, or they could potentially negotiate with MLGW and potentially even supply some of their needs, or negotiate for uh, wheeling for the transmission that they would no longer need for that circumstance. There are just a variety of things that could happen um, and it would be speculation on our part to determine what those solutions could be. But ultimately it would depend upon the leverage that both parties bring to the negotiating table. Um, we have provided some information about what RFPs look like to MLGW. Um, and some of the questions that an RFP can answer include, what are the savings associated with different sized gas combined cycle plants? What are the costs of more remote re renewables? If you went to areas of the country where renewables are even less expensive than they are in this region uh, with the higher transmission cost offset 
the, the lower cost of renewables, all of those kinds of things can be tested to determine um, uh, whether there are greater savings. It can also show um, basically how much land can be utilized in terms of bids uh, within the local area. So there are a variety of things that you can learn from an RFP that are not part of the process that we just did. Next question is from uh, Freddie Nallis. Um, he asks a question about uh, costs. Why is why do we want to risk increasing rates? Uh, I think uh, President Young has indicated that he's interested in finding the best solution for all of his customers. If he can get energy supply less expensively than he does today, that is reliable, that he wants to consider it, but he wants to weigh all the risks of doing so. That's the purpose of the IRP and the RFP and the approval steps ahead. So uh, at this point, I think that they are just uh, trying to determine what the right balance is between uh, costs and reliability and other risks associated with these options. The next question is from Joe Azagovich, I think. Um, and his question is, for the renewable energy portfolios, what commitments and measurements are they to obtain this clean energy? He also asks, what programs will be included for residential and community solar? And he notes that a residential battery storage program similar to ones in Australia provide the opportunity to stabilize the grid and provide a source of backup power supply. Couldn't that help? I think uh, several part answer, but uh, one, one of them is uh, that today, MLGW has to secure its energy from TVA. The TVA option with the long-term partnership, there is more flexibility built into community and residential solar programs. That could be an option for MLGW also if it joins MISO, since it has more control over its supply. The prices for clean energy can be confirmed with an RFP where bidders lock in prices for specific projects. Um, and in addition, one can actually look at virtual power plants that can integrate rooftop solar and home batteries to help stabilize the grid. They could be part of the offering uh, that would be requested in the upcoming RFP. So that is, those are all options. Um, the next question was uh, from Catherine Heise, uh, who indicated that a lot of this is very technical and how do we make the right decision uh, in this? And can you break this down uh, for people in layman's terms to try and uh, explain kind of what are the key options? And I think it's a great question. Obviously, this is a very complex and technical topic. Boiled down, MLGW has two very good options. Uh, they can stay with their current provider who's provided reliable power for over 80 years uh, and provides some of the lowest rates in the country. Or you can exit the agreement for the possibility of even lower rates if confirmed by the RFP. Uh, the decision will rest on some important considerations, including whether or not MLGW wants to control how s sustainable or renewable it wants to be, and whether it wants to accept the risks of being part of a big market run by an independent operator. Uh, I'll simply point out that most utilities in the country operate under that kind of an agreement. You know, there are uh, there's TVA and Bonneville Power and, and some other public entities that are similarly situated, but most utilities are operating under some form of an ISO or an RTO or a bilateral agreement where uh, the risks are, are, are under, well understood, but nonetheless, there are risks that are there. Um, 
The next question it was actually uh, uh, as much a comment as it was a, um, a set of questions. Let me let me see if I can find it here. It's from Nick Rutledge. And uh, it, it's a long question, I won't read it all, but I'll summarize some of the points and those uh, can read it on the webpage, his full set of comments. Uh, he's actually a TVA employee, uh, but he says that uh, his comments are his own. He raised several questions. Um, the first was that Building and operating power plants is not a strength of MLGWs as evidenced by experience with the Allen power plant. Uh, second, he said that building natural gas plants is going to be at odds with uh, the city of Memphis who's trying to reduce emissions. And third, he points out that high energy costs are due in part to inefficient equipment in homes and businesses and that has to be dealt with regardless of uh, what decision is made with regard to TVA. So uh, I'll let his comments stand on its own, but I'll just make a couple of comments to that. Uh, first, MLGW doesn't have to own, maintain, or operate the, the plants that are a part of the IRP. Um, they can partner with someone like Entergy, or they could acquire power from independent power producers under long-term contracts who are experienced in operating and maintaining these plants to meet their needs. So uh, you don't have to build power plants, although they could if they wish. Second, uh, MLGW can determine how much power and of what type to develop locally to manage its carbon footprint in, the, in, in their footprint. Uh, we showed that a lot of the renewable uh, supply is cheapest when it's locally provided. So um, getting as much local uh, renewables as possible is, is important and can manage that footprint. And they can buy and sell in MISO for its remaining requirements. So uh, it can manage its own footprint from that perspective. Uh, the third point is uh, the programs that will aid customers in terms of its efficient use of electricity. And it's true, we, we did put in some high-level analysis associated with energy efficiency programs to Im improve the efficiency of the equipment and, and create savings that way. Uh, and we've added costs in our analysis to ensure that that is fairly represented. But MLGW will have to consider specific programs at some future date as part of its longer term energy efficiency program to try and achieve those objectives. So I've answered all of the pre-written questions. Uh, I realize that uh, we have hit the magical 7.30 time and uh, I, I'm just going to open it up to JT and Frank to see if uh, you want to extend the time and entertain any more questions or not. Yes, thank you, Gary, because I was actually just going to, to interrupt you just to let you know or give you at least the time frame. Thank you. Yeah, Gary. Okay, go ahead, Frank. I was just going to say, uh, President Young, we have a few questions that's come over the chat line. Of, of, of attendees who've been on since the very beginning. I at least would like to address their questions if we could, Gary, uh, before we wrap up. And then President Young, if you want to continue with additional questions, we can. I think we need to leverage this time as, uh, and get all the questions answered that we can tonight. So if we've got questions that came up tonight, let's go ahead and answer those. Okay, Gary, can you see the ones on the chat line, Gary? Uh, I have just opened the chat line um, and I see, let's see, I think I see four questions here. That's great. That's how many I have as well. There should be, I think, two from Simone, one from Dennis, and one from Joe. Okay. 
Uh, I've got Joe's on the screen, so let me read that one. Um, can you identify where the difference in savings over TVA are from? Is it from labor or other factors? Looking at some of the retail residential rates of MISO covered areas, except Arkansas, they have competitive or higher rates uh, of 10 cents or and above per kilowatt hour and above. Um, if you're asking about retail rate comparisons, we haven't done retail rate comparisons directly with regard to TVA versus uh, uh, other um, utilities in MISO. Um, but what I can say with regard to the savings that we're showing from uh, from TVA, and I'll ask uh, Nelson if he wants to add to this, but, but TVA has legacy um, power plants that have been built over time that regardless of what they do, they either uh, have to retire those plants and go to more renewables, but they still have to pay them off. So there are some costs associated with Lego legacy resources that don't necessarily have to be dealt with if you go to MISO. So that could be part of the of the difference are kind of the legacy costs associated with the, the power plants that they have. Um, Nelson, do you have other thoughts with regard to the uh, uh, the differences in, in savings associated with uh, the legacy situation? Nelson, if you're speaking, I'm, uh, I'm not hearing you're muted, I guess. I guess, I guess if we don't have Nelson for the moment. Um, Gail is indicating she can't hear anyone. Uh, I'm, I hear my own echo so I can hear myself. Uh, I can, yeah, I can yeah. hear you fine. I hear everything yeah. fine as well. Okay. And I do show that Nelson is unmuted, so I'm not sure if maybe he just stepped away from his mic, but. Okay. Can you hear, can you hear me now? Can yes, I can hear you now, Nelson. Go ahead. Yeah, I have to switch hardware again. Now, when we looked at the. Uh, TVA for comparison. We look into detail of all of their components of the grid, and one important was their debt, their, their services of their debt and their repayment, and that's a reflection of all of this legacy. Other components were the different fuel mix, their. Um, Transition process. I, I would say that the, the biggest difference uh, the repayment of their existing debt, and right. uh, which relates to that, which relates to the point I made, which is their legacy power plants uh, that that they have to pay off, regardless of whether they close them or keep them operating. Correct. Okay. Uh, the next question, uh, I see Dennis Lynch has asked two questions. He said, uh, is it possible to create a comprehensive pros and cons analysis of each option? Um, and his second question or comment was that the objectives and metrics goalposts are changing. He said that uh, initially we committed to use jobs created, but now it's changed to uh, dollars invested. Um, so the, the first thing is that we will certainly try in our draft report, we've tried to explain uh, the differences in the different metrics. Uh, we can probably add a listing of pros and cons associated with not only uh, the pros and cons with regard to exiting or staying with TVA, but also 
uh, some of the pros and cons associated with some of the four portfolios that we've described. I'm sure that we could add a table to the document if, uh, if that is of interest. So uh, that's a reasonable request. Um, the second one is uh, the, the change in um, the, the metric. Uh, I think it would be very hard for us to uh, do a macroeconomic analysis to kind of show what jobs are created. Um, we have looked at uh, kind of dollars invested in local resources, which we thought was a reasonable uh, proxy associated with that. Uh, I'll come back. Dennis is adding more as we as we as we speak. So uh, I'm going to go back to a couple of the other ones. Hey, uh, want to go to the top? Yeah, they're at the top. Um, uh, Simon Mahan asks, can Siemens explain how energy storage resources were modeled and were the benefits focused on MISO capacity value and energy arbitrage? Uh, Nelson, you want to take that? Yeah, sure. And, and the answer is yes. So, uh, the, the batteries had uh, capacity credit and also were used to arbitrage, basically to move energy from the daytime, we have cheap renewable resources producing, and uh, we discharge at night, producing higher energy purchases from ISO. So yes, both aspects were considered. He also had another question. Uh, for the natural gas resources in the all MISO portfolio, did Siemens model these as new build uh, facilities did, did we evaluate buying or contracting from existing power capacity within MISO? Again, Nelson, why don't you grab it? Uh, yeah, sure. In, in fact, part of the optimization process, the program was looking at purchasing from MISO, from existing facilities, or deciding to build. And uh, in this case, the combined cycle was built as it was found to be a, a cheaper option than to purchase the capacity from the MISO market and buying the energy from the MISO market. So it's a new build. In some cases, like the combines, the, the combustion turbines, we see the opposite, that starts buying from the capacity market, the bilateral contract market in MISO, and then later in the time, it builds the combined side, the, the combustion turbine. So yes, it's an it was built by the model. Right. So we are evaluating both options against each other, I guess, as part of the answer. And sometimes it's uh, capacity that we buy in the market, and sometimes it's builds. Uh, Dennis Lynch also asked, uh, has MLGW or Siemens evaluated TVA's claimed extra benefits, like supporting the pilot, which uh, pilot is the uh, a payment in lieu of taxes? and providing other non-energy benefits. And the answer is to that is that, yes, Nelson went through uh, a comparison. One of our pages goes through all of those benefits and the dollars that uh, to make it equivalent or an apples to apples investment comparison were actually done uh, so that we had a fair comparison associated with, uh, uh, with the, the dollars spent and, to match the dollars that were invested by TVA to make sure it's a fair comparison. Um, let me see if there are others. Uh, load forecast, how much variability could there be in what actually happens? And is there value in having more flexible power generation strategies? Um, so there's a fair amount of variability in the load forecasts, uh, some of which are based upon kind of the historical factors, but I think maybe even more important are some of the more recent changes uh, like electrification of, uh, uh, of industrial and residential components 
um, maybe even laws and rules that could take place that would that would drive electrification. Electric vehicles forecasts are a significant uncertainty uh, as well. Both of those could actually increase load, and of course, the energy efficiency programs can reduce load. So uh, there's a decent amount of upside. I think if you notice on the slides that we had. Uh, there was more upside than downside uh, of the forecast. That is a, a change from the several years ago where most of the uh, uncertainty was on the downside of the load forecast, but, uh, but we're actually showing uh, significant upside. So there's a decent amount of uncertainty associated with that. And um, relating to the more flexible power generation strategies, Yes, it is important to have optionality and some flexibility uh, built in, which uh, a portion of the supply on, in these strategies are always going to be more market driven and potentially some shorter term contracts to allow for that kind of flexibility to deal with load swings over time. Uh, Ricky Lewis just asked a question. If we go to an outside utility company, how will it affect service to the customers? Um, I think that that's a significant question that we've been trying to address all night, which is um, the, the expectation is that customers would not see any appreciable difference in their service uh, other than potentially a change to the, to the bill. Um, uh, other than that, I don't think there is an expectation that there are differences, substantial enough differences in the reliability of the generation or the transmission to uh, to show much of any impact on service to any uh, any customers. At least that's the intent. Have I have I answered them all? I think I've covered all the questions that I've seen. Gary, you have, and uh, we appreciate that. <laughs> President Young, we'll turn it over to you to kind of close us out for tonight. Okay, great. Hey, um, Gary, and um, uh, really do appreciate you and Nelson um, standing in and doing the uh, presentation tonight. I want to say to those who uh, have been listening in. Thank you for your engagement. Thank you for your participation. And I want to remind you that there will be opportunities for additional questions and answers. If you go to our website at mlgw.com, you will be able to access the draft IRP. And in that same area, just to the right of where you can um, access uh, that, you will see the opportunity to click on another icon and actually get some uh, ask your questions and it gives you also an email a direct email address if you wish to do it that way but you can do it all from the mlgw website so please feel free to do that thank you for your engagement and for your questions and again to siemens thank you for uh, being with uh, us tonight in our community uh, to help us along as we're in the process of uh, we think making a very significant decision for the community. Uh, if there are no further questions, I want to say thanks also to the MLGW team that's been on the call as well. Any other thoughts from any of them, uh, Alonzo or Dana, or Cheryl, or anyone else on the MLGW side? Sure, JT, this is Alonzo. Uh, I want to thank everyone for participating in the, um, uh, particularly from the community, for participating in this uh, uh, community meeting. Uh, providing questions input and particularly for those who got the questions in in advance uh it helped us do a, a little bit more thorough uh, answers to the question uh want to hats off to the siemens team for uh, uh coming in and, and presenting as well as the work that they've done and and pulling this together and uh the members of the image of staff who have worked so hard and 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 pulling off this event uh, particularly our corporate communication staff as well as um, the siemens corporate uh, staff and um, uh, those who worked in the, in the background of providing all the data and information to get this uh, very thorough analysis done. Our objective from the very beginning is to make sure we do a thorough and fair analysis of what options are out there to make sure that we have um, the best 
um, uh, best solution for our customers. Um, that now best has a lot of definitions, and um, we try to look at all those and factor those out. That's why that scorecard is so important. So once again, thank you. All right. Very good. Well, again, thanks everyone for your attendance. We appreciate that. And we look forward to hearing from you um, in the future. Everyone stay safe. Thank you. This conference will now be recorded.